So right now I'm on the last step, the ramping up to 175. So this is my brew control box. I've got it set to 178. We're at about 170. That controls the heating element in this kettle to work its pump out of the kettle through this chugger pump into the top of the mash tun with this little recirculation manifold. And then since my second pump died, we're just gravity feeding back into the kettle. So this is my brew control box. Um, you can see it's got an amp meter. It's running about 16.7 right now. Uh, so I built this box to run off 240 volts at 50 amps because there are, it, it can control two elements. I'm, I'm only using one currently. So two elements, they each run at about 15 amps each, uh, plus pumps, 30 amps wasn't enough. So I built this box to run off of 50 amps. When I moved into this house, the only 240 volt outlet that I have is for the dryer and it's a 30 amp outlet, which since I'm only running one element is okay, but a 30 amp outlet is only three pronged where a 50 amp outlet is four pronged. So I couldn't physically plug it in. So this is the four prong outlet where this box connects. It runs to this box that I built to sort of extend the cable. Um, so that's, that's a four prong plug. It comes out and this end is a four prong plug. And this little adapter I bought is a three prong plug in the wall with a four prong plug outlet. It converts from three to four. And the thing that you miss between three and four is the ground. So this adapter has this little ground wire that comes out and plugs in there. And so that's how my brew box works. Um, it's got uh, these two 120 volt outlets that are for the pumps. They're controlled by these two uh, buttons at the bottom. And this is where one element plugs in. That's where I will plug in a second element and that's where the temperature probes plug in. So originally I had this kettle sitting up there and I had a pump coming out going into there and then another pump coming out of here going into that. Um, but my second pump died. This is my second pump. It's just a little cheap pump that I've had for a long time. So now I'm gravity feeding. Eventually I'll replace this pump. But for now we're gravity feeding. Um, the only hard part with this two kettle rim system is you kind of have to juggle these nozzles, that one and that one, because you have to keep enough liquid on top of the grain bed while more importantly keeping that heating element submerged. You can see that, that ring, that's the heating element. It's a circular heating element. Um, so every once in a while I just have to come check and adjust these valves to keep the flow correct. I could get one of those float valves uh, for the top of this that sits on top of the grain bed. Um, I don't think I have enough liquid um, for the ball to float. So this is, a, this, is, this is how I'm doing it now. Eventually I'll get a second pump again so I can put this back on this table and uh, use the second pump to return it. And the last step here, 175 for 30 minutes. The box is set to 178. Uh, this reads about 173.8, so we're pretty close. Um, I think I got the flow right, so I can put the lids on now. I think next time I'm going to try to keep the lids on more. Um, I just don't want to have a lot of evaporation. Um, so after we're done with this step, we will drain into the kettle and see how much liquid we got. So we finished the mash. We drained it all out into the kettle. <clears throat> I was supposed to have 6.75 gallons, but I ended up only getting five gallons. I think because I had the top off while I was recirculating, I evaporated a lot. So next time I'm gonna keep the, the lids on while I'm recirculating. Um, so I was above gravity anyway, so I added enough water to get back up to 6.75 and I'm still a little bit over gravity, which is a good problem to have. Uh, so right now, we're set to manual mode, 100%. 
Uh, once this thing starts to boil, I will crank this down to about 70%. I found that at 100%, I can boil almost two gallons in an hour. <clears throat> so I'm gonna crank it down because I'm trying to only boil about a gallon off. Um, while we're doing that, we're having a gluten-free pizza break. All right, so see we're boiling now and it's on 70% duty cycle. So you can see it boils. It boils for 70% of this specified time interval. So you can see it stops and then kicks back in and boils again. I find that at 100% I'll boil off too much. Um, <clears throat> so we're at 70%. Boiling, we already added our 60 minute hops. Um, this recipe only has two hop additions, so got a timer going, and we'll see what the volume is at the end of the boil. So the brew's done. Um, I hit the volume I wanted and the gravity that I wanted, so that's, that's good. Um, I've got my work chiller in there hooked up to the hose. And I'm also recirculating. I haven't tried this before. I'm trying to get the temperature down quicker. I'll probably just need to buy a plate chiller or upgrade my cooling. Um, maybe a recirculating cooler for a bucket full of ice or something. I've had various systems over the years. Um, probably the next thing I upgrade. Um, so this time I'm trying to recirculate all cool. Let's see how that goes. <clears throat> 